so grateful to be here and for everybody to be here tonight. Um, I could stand up here all day and testify to what God has done in my life, probably all week. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm a miracle in itself to be alive today and to have two little, sweet little angels in my life now, little Nene and Nessa, which I never thought I'd be able to have a family. But I'm grateful today because of Jesus. Um, is this not turning? Oh, well, I don't know how to turn it on. Sorry. I was like, I think Eli does that part. <laughs> okay. So again, I could testify all day about what God has done in my life. Um, just numerous miracles in my life. So um, the way that Celebrate Recovery does their testimonies is we write it down. And so we'll be I'll be reading my testimony, so it's a lot of reading. Um, but I want to say a prayer before I get started. So, Heavenly Father, I'm just coming to you in the name of Jesus, and I ask, Lord God, that you would open up the hearts to the people that um, need to hear this message, Father, whether it's a spouse or a child, Lord God, or if it's the person that's actually going through it right now the, in the battle, Lord God. Father, I pray that you open up their hearts to receive this message, Father, and let them um, just find hope. Even if it's one person, I pray that they're able to find hope, Lord God, and cling to you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, and uh, I just pray that you be glorified, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so as a child, I was raised in the church, attending service every Sunday, Occasionally on Wednesdays, and I never missed a year of vocational Bible school. This was by choice because I remember my parents did not always go. Yet I was sure that my grandparents picked me up so I would never miss a Sunday. I had the fear of the Lord and a love for Jesus at an early age. I still have the Bible where I committed my life to Jesus the day that I was saved at the age of eight. However, parts of my childhood had a negative impact on me my parents did love me. I never really went without anything, but there were parts of my childhood that had a negative impact on me. To simplify it, at a young age, I felt rejected and not good enough, which generated into me having a low self-esteem. The effects of the rejection and trauma really began to surface between the ages of 13 and 17 years old. The effects of the rejection and trauma, the symptoms were revealed through my actions. My parents noticed and sent me to a counselor where I was diagnosed with PTSD and OCD. It was also quite obvious that I had developed an addictive personality. Now I have described a perception of my childhood to help you better understand why these life-changing events in my life transpired. It was at the age of 17 that I began straying away from God in the church. I began running after a way to escape my reality. I did not like myself and wanted to be free from the pain I felt in my mind, which in my lack of understanding seemed unbearable. I know that at the adolescent age, it's time when you begin to discover who you are. So for me, it was distressing, distressing with all the negative words spoke over me and the trauma I had experienced. I began searching for ways to escape my reality and at that age, it was easy to do with all the alcohol and drugs offered by peers. So the experimental use of drugs and alcohol that started at the age of 17 had spiraled into a self-destructive behavior where I soon became extremely addicted to mind-altering substances that temporarily made me feel happy. The use of alcohol and drugs became me and shook my life to the core. The substances led me straight to a path of destroying my entire life and body, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. After a while, it was no longer fun, but the sin that I was living in had a grip on my very soul. I was helpless and hopeless with no sight of a way out. The consequences of me living in a self-destructive manner began, or being completely dependent on a substance that became 10 times more painful than the reality I once was trying to escape. It was manifesting into a shattered life it took me destroying myself from the inside out to, de to finally see that the solution to my issues was to simply forgive those that hurt me. 
and love myself. You see, Jesus forgave us for so much more. So by holding on to my forgiveness, I was allowing the enemy to have leeway into my mind and my spirit, which was taking over my whole being. There was no one to blame but the enemy. It was Satan that had tricked me into my addiction and the resentment in my heart, which leads to this one very important thing I was never taught, and that is we are living in a spiritual warfare. God's word specifically tells us to put on the full armor of God so that we can stand against the devil's schemes. And that was what all this was, the devil's schemes. Further, he says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. We are told to stay aware of Satan's schemes, to live in alert in, in an alert in this world. Sober-minded, keeping the doors closed to ungodliness, to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Even though I had established what caused my self-destructive behavior, I needed something supernatural to transform me and give me the strength to overcome the dependency of self-created addictions. Thankfully, I knew Jesus, and thankfully, I know Jesus. Although I may not have had an intimate relationship that is immensely needed, I did, however, love him and knew he loved me with an unconditional love. I knew it in my heart where that seed was once planted, that I could call on my savior. So in the darkest part of my addiction, where my body and mind was broken to what seemed to be beyond repair, in my anguish I called on him. And he faithfully answered me by setting me free from barely able to walk and talk without a drink. It was there on my knees crying out to my savior that he came and provided a way out for me. It was just four days later that I was on a plane to Texas to a faith-based program that gave me the opportunity to let go of what the devil had attempted to destroy. <coughs> Soon after, I made the most discerning decision in my life by laying down all my past issues at the feet of Jesus and giving him power over my life. His will be done, no longer my own. I discovered that, that obedience in Christ was the key to happiness and eternal success. It was his strength and my weakness that I seen the Lord within me manifest in a new life be born. I was born again. I found my identity in Christ. The meaning to life was unleashed and I finally had found my purpose. It was then that I was filled with an inner joy, an inner peace that surpasses all understanding and a confidence that I never knew, all from Christ alone. God had transformed me from the inside out, dying to the old self and becoming reborn with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. With my comforter and God's word, I had the instructions to a healthy life full of purpose. I stood delivered from the evil that once had such a grip on me. I remain grateful, holding on to zero regret. I believe I went through the valley of darkness because God knew I would come out bringing glory to his name and helping people that are lost and hopeless like I once was. The year of 2007 was the time I found my calling and my mission transformed, renewed, and ready to tell the world of his awesome power, his miraculous deliverance and restoration. A remarkable experience that took place in 2007, and now 10 years later, where I had been given my heart's desires and so much more. You see, my heart's desires became his desires. I prayed, remained obedient to following his will for my life, and in return, God blessed me beyond measure. I now have two little girls, a God-fearing husband, and a life closer to my parents. <laughs> with the relationships forever restored, two ministries, living out my passions, and most importantly, I have an amazing relationship with my Lord and Savior. All of the negative words and diagnosis from the doctors of addiction, PTSD, OCD, depression, was all erased. I was delivered and set free. I have not felt a single speck of the corrupted illnesses that the enemy once had over me. Deliverance struck through me making me brand new. I became a new creation in Christ. I have been white clean, white as snow, forever changed. The joy has given me an un is unending. My love for people has increased to a capacity I never knew existed. It is God that is love, and without him, I could never love myself or others. I now love with a non-judging, non-condemning, all-forgiving heart because it is he that lives in me. The last very important message I received through it all was a word in Genesis. As for you meant evil against me, God meant it for good to bring about that people should be kept alive 
It was through my living testimony that God called me into my mission. I stand determined to help as many people as I can by helping the lost seek hope through Jesus. That is where hope and power to overcome is found. God can turn a wretched life around into the most beautiful life. No scheme of man, no power in hell can ever pluck me from his hand. God calls his beauty for ashes. Ashes were the wounded parts of my life. And beauty is what God made out of it by surrendering all to Jesus. I just have one more little thing to say. <laughs> so for anyone that has a loved one, or if you are struggling yourself, I would ask that you take a moment to hear me out. God uses faith-based programs, meetings, rehabs, and ministries like Celebrate Recovery as a vessel to reach the lost and the hopeless. It was 11 years ago that God used a faith-based discipleship pro program called Teen Challenge as a vessel to not only save my life, but to transform it. My brokenness had led me into a self-destructive behavior where I, I had a heart attack, kidney failure, and a 35% chance of making it in the next five years if I continued on the way that I did. It had been five to, I'd been to five secular rehabs, AA, NA, and not one of them worked. So when I was offered a place that offered Jesus, the man I loved so much as a child, I took it. You must know that there is an 86% success rate in faith-based programs and 100% successful if you truly open your heart to Christ. After graduating the program, I received my credentials as a biblical counselor through Teen Challenge Ministries. I began working for the program as a teacher and outreach director. That's when I discovered the call in my life. I found my true identity, which is in Christ and my ultimate purpose. God taught me that all I ever needed was him. He was, is, and always will be my counselor, my strength, and my stronghold. I was able to witness hundreds of lives be saved by the power of Christ. I also had the opportunity to see the ministry celebrate recovery and see many lives transformed through it by restoring and renewing people in their lives, their, in their families that were once broken. One more important lesson I learned was that recovery itself is a process, but God promises to give strength to overcome. I spent five years in recovery with episodes of backsliding until the year of 2011 when God fully delivered me. In Proverbs, it says the righteous man may fall seven times, but he will rise again without calamity. It's all about getting back up and not staying down when you fall. Instead, use it to catapult you into a wiser, stronger victor. As I continue to see the evil wreaking havoc on the lost and their families literally destroying and killing people left and right, I want to tell the world there's a way out. God wants to call you straight out of darkness into his marvelous light. He wants to redeem you, restore you, deliver you, and make you victorious. Just as he delivered Daniel from the lion's den, he set him in a great place. He will do the same for you because he loves you. Just as he gave Job twice as much as what he had before his calamity, he will do the same for you because he loves you. We must never forget that in every life there is hope. There is no trial too difficult for God. He is an unlimited in his power. We must, uh, the same power that raised Jesus from the grave lives in me and you too if you choose. I can promise you there is a way. There is a cure and it's Jesus. Thank you all.